the forge has gone quiet, the bellows blow no more. The forge has gone quiet, the smiths have gone home. Only fading embers remain, and my hearth grows cold. One kiss from you to rekindle it all. Okay, welcome back to Queen of Embers, episode 32, picking up where we left off as you are passing through the streets, through the old city, and you're getting closer to the Baroness's palace, and the larger and more opulent the estates become. The page leads you through so many reinforced gates uh, and decorated doors that you begin to lose count. The maze is a virtual, or the palace is a virtual maze of passages and hallways. Uh, finally, the page stops in front of these decorated double doors, and you can see Master Hexenstern. He's wearing his his black doublet with the long robes that are tied at the waist, with the high boots, and the and the kind of Nehru collar around his neck. And he is there, almost waiting for you. Uh, and there is another group of pages that are standing nearby a closet um, where they are pulling out these capes. Uh, and uh, he instructs and says, You need to wear these capes when you are before the Baroness to make you look presentable. Okay. Okay. Right. Behind, behind the door, you can hear a low murmur, a very tall double door that's barely open. How nice these capes look. Well, they're 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 green, uh, and they're adorned with the symbol of a boar entangled with an owl. Hmm. She still uses that some. Mm -hmm. Well, they had the remember the Dupre had the boar, and when they married the Genevieve, the boar and the owl were adjoined into the same standard. Now the new standard is the boar entangled with an owl. Who who would that? Be? Now, all of you, well, those of you who are Rovanian around the table may immediately attempt a um, an easy folklore test. But only those who are Rovanian. Fifty-nine. Sixty-three. Twenty-two. Twenty-one. Twenty-six. You all succeeded. You critically succeeded. Yep. Right? So those who succeeded, you know that Madeline Dupre and Lyndon Genevieve the Lesser, the Younger, the second Genevieve of his name, married many, many years ago. And when Lyndon the Younger was declared a baron by the now king, Cassander Malister the Unifier, he and Madeline were made baron and baroness, and after the passing of the Duke Vance Dauntenthorne, Dorindle fell to them. A sordid, a series of sordid affairs led to a divorce that uh, drove the Baron Linda Genevieve and his interests outside of Dorindle. And Madeline Genevieve, nay Dupre, has not only reclaimed her former maiden name of Dupre, Baroness Madeline, um, she has changed her standard to show, in, in essence, the entanglement in which. Uh, the Dupre and the Genevieve are now embroiled in politically. As for you, Elisa, the thing that the thing that kind of comes to you as you critically succeeded, you also know of a, a terribly of a terrible secret that was kept for some number of years that has been spoken about in very private circles. That in fact, Madeline Dupre was a war hostage, um, who and was forced to marry. Uh, Lyndon Genevieve the Younger. It is said that love never grew between them. But everyone knows that the Genevieve and the Dupre were kind of political enemies for some time. The, the, to put it lightly. Yeah. And there was no children between them, right? Uh, apparently, not that you know of, no. Okay. None are, now, it is certainly spoken that the Baron has spread his seed all across the Rovane Girdle and to the west and a little bit to the south. 
But none of the bastards have been recognized by any means. But no, the Baroness has never bore any children. Sure loves his buffets. You all look good. He comes up and he kind of, he kind of cleans the, the cape off a bit, kind of dusting your shoulders. Uh, Alistair. Pull the cape around. Oh, Bruce, all over a minute. The strange fellow touching me. <laughs> look back at him. Remember what I told you. Do you recall my words? Don't speak. Only answer. Don't speak unless spoken to. Do not approach her grace unless she asks. Do not question her grace, and whatever you do, do not comment on her grace's age. Mm -hmm. Remember, if you say something inappropriate, you'll be thrown out, and if you do something inappropriate, you'll be jailed or worse. Pay her the proper respects. He's kind of living a low whisper as he's talking to you, as clearly the doors of, into her palace or her throne room are open. Your grace, right? Your grace. Yeah, yeah, her grace. You can't help but feel a bit unnerved being in this place. Anybody here not of the arist- aristocracy? <laughs> Those who are not of the aristocracy immediately need to immediately attempt a standard uh, resolve test to, to withstand uh, stress. Could I finally worked in my could I attempt this doppelganger to masquerade? <laughs> Absolutely. Mm. Go ahead and make Stay a disguise the test. This test for you. Fifty-five percent chance. This will be for you a routine test, Lisa. Uh, all right. So that gives me fifty-two plus my twenty for doppelganger, so mm-hmm. seventy-two. And with an odd five, I succeed. Nice. I just leave it in my test. I fail. Okay. Barely. Those who fail are suffering from stress, Makes which sense. means you gain a ten mental peril Ooh, and, three corru- and three corruption. And not only that, you feel the other pulling within you. You feel this <laughs> otherness inside oh, of you, God, no. Warren. So the question is: Will you succumb to your possession? <laughs> or you attempt to withstand it for now. Just attempt, attempt to withstand. Okay. The good thing is, is that you actually have a talisman, so you may attempt a, another challenging resolve test. Okay. Oh, please. All right. So that's a challenging. Okay. So that's fifty-four percent chance to succeed, and I rolled a thirty-four. Nice. Oh. Okay. You grasp onto the talisman that Indora gave to you, and you push the other out. It's not happy about it. I, th- I think, uh... Oh, he could... I think toast. it's your puppy howling <laughs> yeah. in the corner. Probably yeah, that it's Jack howling at the puppy. I can't... No, nah, hold on. It's so... No. <laughs> <laughs> so, you pulled, you grasp onto the talisman that Andorra gave you, and the other does not take control for now. But nonetheless, you, those who fail feel nervous in this entire situation. Mm. Is there any last questions you have for me before we enter the throne room? Mm. Master Hexen Cern <laughs> asks, this is the point where you... The save game. Yeah. yeah. The save game. <laughs> Talk to those other years, Chris. Why did the music just change? Oh, God. <laughs> Never went arm up. No. I'm going to collect all the health items I find. <laughs> yeah. Can I use a 10 on the spot? We'll double back and gather everything before we move on. <laughs> I'm going to hit the fire, reset everything. That's right, yeah. elixir, 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 high motion, high motion. Uh, did you find out anything else we should know from your meeting with her yesterday? Nine. Nothing yet. Right. Then I have nothing else. Speak with spoken to. Got it. No age. Her grace. What? No, no grace. Uh, yep, your grace. Your grace. Yes, your grace. No, your grace. All right, Zen. <laughs> the doors will open into this room as a man bursts out from the other side, looking very consternated and angry. This merchanteer looking fellow who turns about and kind of presses between all of you and the interior of her of her uh, entire chamber, her gallery opens before you. 
you're kind of ushered in almost instantly by the page and Master Hexenstern. As you can see, this this the, the gallery, the Baroness's gallery, kind of open up. Now, the decorated ceiling is high with arches, and the walls are covered from floor to floor with paintings depicting all manner of strange animals engaged in revelry. The Baroness sits on a high chair in the middle of the room and is every bit as real as you would expect. Beautiful, refined, graceful, incredibly attractive. Uh, and she's dressed in a green and brown gown so expensive you can imagine it would probably pay for a small Romanian town. She is surrounded by an assembly of small mirrors and pulleys suspended from the ceiling. A very young Aradane painter, judging by his clothing and accent, fusses about with the construction, pulling on the pulleys like one would do with chandeliers. As these mirrors kind of fall and move to different directions, kind of from the light cascading above, arranging the light just so that she's sitting perfectly in the throne. In a low, very low voice, kind of, Hexenstern leans in as you're kind of coming into the gallery, and he says, That is a Alain selfie, and he's showcasing his invention, you see. A system that allows to one allows one to paint self-portraits almost anywhere without the need of compass and body mirrors or adequate lighting. Pay no mind to him. Terran wordlessly just stares at Hexenstern wide-eyed and kind of nods forward like like should should we step forward? Yeah, yeah, come on, come on. Nudge you from behind. <laughs> There are clearly others in the room as well besides the Aridane artist Elaine Selfie and um, and uh, the Baroness. Uh, first, there are half a dozen Brigandine royal guards dressed in the regalia of Baroness Dupre, wearing upon their their doublets the standard of the of the boar attacking the eagle, or sorry, the the owl, tearing the owl apart feather by feather. An elderly woman. Uh, who probably is the Baroness's chaperone, is sitting and brewing by a small table. The scratching of the quills fly as a couple of scribes right down the minutes from an earlier meeting, and another one, uh, uh, some sort of scholar, kind of bursts between you all. Pardon me, pardon me, as he passes beyond. There's quite a bit of hubbubbery to be happening here in the gallery. A skinny, very sinewy, Rovanian fellow sits by a small table full of fruit and wine and kind of scrutinizes you, watching you as you pass inside. He has almost a mischievous, elfin sort of appearance with a wry smile. And another, a very stylish woman dressed in a simple but fashionable gown and a symbol of the learner nods at Master Hexenstern as you enter and joins you as they, as you approach the Baroness. Um, excuse me. Um, Good people, this is Barrister Rosalia Mansfield, the first barrister of Dorindle. How do you do? She smiles. A pleasure to meet you all. An impressive feat. Aye. <laughs> first of my name. Hello. <laughs> she smiles. She will <laughs> shake your hands. She has a firm and steady grip. When she reaches out to shake hands, Terwin kind of... Relaxes a little bit. <laughs> you see, <clears throat> the Baroness is attending to other duties right now. Other people are attending to it. I'm, the meeting minutes have first been taken. Uh, she shall see you shortly. Of course. <laughs> On her time. She has a very, in your, in, from your ears, um, uh, Banneker, she has a very Western accent, like a Frenchish accent. Uh, judging by her name, Rosalia, you would judge she's probably from the northern part of Aglador. Maybe like Kale Landon? <clears throat> Kale Landon. Elsewhere. Yeah. Do I catch a Kale Landonese accent there, my lady? Oui. My family comes from Kale Landon, just outside, is it not? Oh, you've been there? Yes. Yes. It's a beautiful country. I do... Miss the wheel. It is uh, so different than the girdle, but uh, I have enjoyed my time here for certain. It is very different here. I will, I will agree. May I inquire, in what purpose do you serve for the Baroness? Forgive me, my, forgive my ignorance, she says. 
We were hoping to run that up. We were hoping you would be able to tell us, yes. <laughs> We've been assisting Master Hex instead with some things around the town to uh, assist the citizens. Badly he's spoken quite well of us. Master Hexenstern says you are uh, officials. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. We, we is as he uh, points to his uh, writ and uh, smiles a cheesy grin. We're we the ones that found the difference machine. You know. Hmm. She kind of nods, We're maybe afraid. not understanding but being polite. <laughs> so we you serve assisted. the High Deputy Liam the Frank. Right. Yes. Yep. But at this time, our, our business definitely has to do with assisting in Durendals. She. Oh, excuse me. She says as she looks toward your badges. You serve High Deputy Alexi. Yeah. Guy's been broken a bunch. <laughs> to be more precise, yes. Hmm. Interesting. She notes. You all know that there are two divisions of the Dufresne. There's the study of the occult, which those who report to Alexi, and those who study of spycraft, those who report to Liam Dufresne direct. You all report direct to Alexi. So we're of, of the cult. Occult, occult yeah. We, we, occult yeah. studies. Occult. We're, we're not very spy. Yeah. No. <laughs> There's nothing spy. What? Yeah. Yeah. What? Point well, knowing story. that Elisa would actually say out, she'd say, I, I, I am not most known for being uh, the most quiet. <laughs> Neither are the rest of them. No, we would not be unto Liam. Alexa is definitely our. No shame in that. <laughs> Up front is usually better. <laughs> well, I believe she is ready. Master Hexen. <laughs> Master Hexen Stern will stand at your left and Barrister Rosalia Mansfield will approach with you toward the Baroness who is situated in her throne and already Elaine Selfie, the young Aridane painter, has affixed the mirrors just so and the Baroness kind of leans over her chair like such with her legs to the side and she will, uh, she will pause looking toward you with a very Long giraffe like neck and pale, pale ivory skin, and a beauty mark upon one cheek, and red ruby lips, and dark reddish brown hair that cascades in many braids over her shoulders. She is dressed every bit as what you would imagine a queen may look like. Her hair is kissed by fire. Master Hexenstern will introduce each of you individually by deed and by name. Those who do not have any deeds behind them will be introduced by your ethnicity. Hailing from the West, you know, the whole thing. <clears throat> After this happens, um, she will regard each of you, and then she returns her face toward one of the nearby mirrors, her eyes not meeting yours, as you stand at the foot of the dais, and she will begin to speak. As you might have heard, I am in the process of seeing Dorinda divorce from Maclador, and giving his own vote in the ministry. Her eyes do not meet yours during this entire conversation. This rather tedious and time-consuming enterprise is finally, Dame Marta, about to reach its conclusion, she says, in a high voice. What do they call it? Mid, mid, what's that accent called? Mid-Atlantic. Mid-Atlantic, yeah. <laughs> Best yeah. Mansfield here, my chief counsel in all matters legal and absurdities regarding this entire affair, needs to travel to Kale Tyrion to finalize some matters. She pauses, takes a long pause. I'm like trying to meet her eyes in the mirror. Her face is reflected multiple times in all manner of profiles, some front facing, some to the side, some to the top, some from beneath her chin. And the woman is very, very striking. But there's something about this arrangement of mirrors that reminds you of the La Vinci chapter house. Yeah. These mirrors are arranged on these different ropes and pulleys all around it, and not in any sort of uniformity, just simply surrounding her almost as if they were in her gravity. My advisors tell me that several of my fellow law and ministers are looking to seize this opportunity to harm my endeavors and perhaps bear to Mansfield as well. 
I cannot allow that. Master Hexenstern tells me you're just the right kind of folk to help me in this matter. To cut to the chase, I need you to escort Burst to Mansfield to kill Tyrion and guarantee her safety. Master Hexenstern will fill you in on the finer details. She turns. What say you? Does she look at any one of us in particular? She, her eyes seem to pass and almost lock instantly with Harper. And you feel this kind of, she's she's looking at me. You need to make an arduous resolve test. Yeah, we'll use the golden dice. Uh, Arduous resolve, so normally 46, arduous make it 16. And that is a 100. Whoa! <laughs> oh my gosh! Roll zero, 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 one, and then one hundred. <laughs> oh my goodness! I think I have a heart attack. You will gain a disorder called lost heart. Okay. And we will address that after the game. I'm really surprised you rolled a critical failure because that was actually supposed to happen later in the mm-hmm. campaign. But nonetheless, you feel you feel this kind of your butterflies in your stomach. You feel that this woman is, like, looking toward you. Like, you feel there's this weird magnetic attraction between you and her. This woman who could easily, based on the way she's dressed and speak, could easily be a queen, and you could be her leal servant. You feel that you're just, you're simply love-struck. You've been struck by the Nine Fathers, uh, Nine Fathers arrow. (laughs) You may even feel a bit of tension in your pant. (laughs) Pant. What say you? You, this, when, she, when the Baroness says this, by the way, the Barrister Mansfield leans over and speaks to Hexenster, and you hear her say, she gave him the look. I'll take a knee, and I will <laughs> bow gracefully and say, my grace, I will do everything in my power to see that your will is done. I will give up my life if it means that your will is done. And we will see that it is done. All of us will. This I pledge to you right now. As <clears throat> I'll continue to take my knee until she responds. Okay. She turns way back toward the knee, toward the mirrors. Very well, Master Hexenstone, if you will. And the doors open in an adjoining from an adjoining gallery, and you hear these musicians start coming out, strumming instruments, a whole trail of them. And you can see these men and women gathering along in the gallery across one another to begin to dance. As there is a celebration that almost seems to unfold in this weird Terry Gilliam-ish sort of way. You feel very out of sorts in a world that is nothing of which you are accustomed to. And just as quickly as you are ushered in and you are brought before her, Master Hexenstern and Barrister Rosalia take a pause and look toward a lot of you. Unless you have other business to discuss with who? <laughs> what are we supposed? I mean, she doesn't seem too predisposed to talking right now. I don't believe we have any time to spare. We should get ready and be at the ready. Well, how are you done enough? You spoke for all of us. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's I do believe your words have been spoken, and maybe we should figure out the rest of this. Has she given us her leave? She yeah, I just need to know if we have leave. I don't want to be making them out. I'm, <coughs> I'm used to being dismissed. Is this the dismissed with her? I suppose it is. But then, before we leave, I will, I will bow. Off. Bow as well. Bow. <laughs> Before I turn. Yeah. Uh, and then turn, and then walk ten feet and bow again, as I'm supposed to. <laughs> sure. <clears throat> yeah. I'm trying to make everybody else do it. You have to grab Harper by the cloak and pull him up. <laughs> Harper is, uh, you are just, you are just transfixed to this woman. She is a image of everything you'd imagine, like, the perfect woman to be. Stately, voluptuous, divine well-spoken, carries herself with an elegance that is indescribable. She is your sun, your moon, and your stars. 
You are transfixed, and you cannot help but feel amorous feelings stirring within your heart. And still, the butterflies have not left your stomach. You can feel your your blood quickening. You can feel kind of like you can feel your, the back of your hair, your hackles on your neck rising, like you're getting goosebumps. Something looking at this whole, and the fact that she looked toward you and spoke direct with you. You, yep. your, be still, your gentle heart. Be still, my gentle heart. <laughs> Elisa follows the bowing. To you, <laughs> Alistair, <laughs> as you are leaving the chambers, all you see is this strange reflection of a woman caked in makeup with, uh, with a, with, 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 um, with a wig, essentially, atop her crown of her head, who looks likely beneath the makeup is not as pretty as those would believe her to be. But there is a magnanimous kind of presence to her that's almost menacing. And it almost feels to you, Alistair, that these people are almost perhaps a fright. As they are carrying on with these almost robotic kind of orchestrations around her. But only to you. What's away away? Are we uh, yes, out you, of earshot of the... Uh... Yes, you are... Just outside of the um, the room, as the doors close, kind of with a solid thud. Well, I mean, if nothing else, uh, she would never know if I uh, fulfilled the promise that he made for me, because she never got a good look at me anyway. Yeah. Like the accurate. She only looked at one person. She looked at all of you. She did address each of as your names were addressed. She did look to each of you, but her her gaze was locked with Harper when she right. mm-hmm. when she made her request to the lot of you. No, she looked at one of us. She glanced at the rest of us. What, what does what does That's Alexa fun. say about this? Hmm. Are we by ourselves? Is you are you are outside the doors. They have shut, mostly shut. And you're now there with Master Hexenstern as the barrister has remained behind. Barrister Rosalia Mansfield remained within. You can still hear the 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 the, the skirts kind of of the of the of the dancers kind of sweeping the floor and the boots tapping and tacking in unison beyond the doors as the sound is muted, including the sound of the lutists and flautists. We were assigned to here. Yeah, we was. We was assigned to assist the Baroness, so... We were assigned to the city. We were assigned to the Baroness to... You do don't get to talk. You've said enough. What, whatever we had to do... To no, actually, I would agree with him. You said enough. I'm just saying. Mm. That's our... That's you got the right right said. there. It's not what you're saying. When are we so supposed to take the barrister? Do you know? Yeah, yeah, to Calitarian to the west is what it sounds like. Um, but when, when are we expected to depart? We will have to inquire with the Baroness after this to get the details of which has happened. I know that she's been making arrangements to take for the barrister to go west to engage with our allies there, but I did not realize it would be so soon. Oh, allies... She, she did not necessarily state everything that we would be doing in the West, but, all right, um... So protecting Listen, this woman. Is there, is there anyone here that has issues with going along with this? I know we've been promised already. I mean no offense, but I do think that we should take our time to each resolve our own thoughts and then think, and speak of it together. Though we have already been promised. <clears throat> but we should all figure out exactly what that means. <clears throat> also, we need to speak to him. Just you and I. Fair enough. You all feel really uncomfortable with this suggestion. That you all would be omitted from private conversation with a new frame. That is not how we do things. Well, we might have to be ready at any notice, so I'm going to go gather my things and I'll be back. As I'm going to leave 
get on Matthew and gather my things to be ready at a moment's notice. All right, hold on, boy. What? You can calm your spurs there. You want to come along? Put your, uh... I'll hold on to his horse's reins. Not <laughs> aggressively. <laughs> I'll Matthew can carry the both of us if you want to come along, too. I... I think you can give yourself a minute so that we can talk this out. Just, uh... Figure out what we need to get, what we need to expect, right? Shall I uh, escort you off the palace grounds first? If you don't mind, friend. Yeah, yeah. He will take you through a confusing uh, series of doors and half-opened, half-opened... Um, uh, my apologies, I'm lost. Uh, he will take you through a series of... Reinforced gateways and decorated doors and until you emerge from the palace back into the old city where you can see the Arab opulence and the aristocracy who dwell within it in this very roomy, uncrowded uh, park outside of the palace. The palace is intimidating in height and size. It does not mirror the baroness nor her temperament at all. It is an imposing steel tooth uh, that pendant that seems to emerge from a nearby hill built cold and uh, bu- built as cold as steel and sharp as a sword um, this place was clearly built by the Daunton Thorn some number of generations ago it is very unbecoming of the Baroness's from what you know of her temperament and even her the way she looks but within it is a different story you are in privacy in the parks outside. There are birds chirping in the nearby trees that are bereft of leaves. You bristle a bit at the cold, perhaps 57 degrees or so, and the air is a little wet. Perhaps a rain is coming soon. But Hex is still with us, right? For now, yes, unless you wish to dismiss him. Hex is saying, i got a few questions for you. Ah, he says, the wind is tugging a bit at your, at your, at your capes. I'm still still, wear. still kind of reeling from all of this, but essentially this is an escort mission, right? It's protection. Well, yeah, for now. I know, I can tell you that this, this these plans the Baroness has enacted has taken some time to come to fruition and they appear to be happening much sooner than I had anticipated. Sure. So, traveling... Making sure someone's protected. There's some lo- some logistics to figure out. Yeah, yeah. And with that, always comes a cost. Mm-hmm. So is this us? You see, I'm I'm not quite keen on what we just what we just offered up because it all went so fast. Is this a volunteer thing we're doing, or are we going to get some sort of fundage in order to? <clears throat> in order to buy supplies, maybe even hire another mercenary or two if we need it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I have conferred with the Baroness and her attendants. I have con- I, I have conferred with the Baroness about your doings and Derendel, mm-hmm. the troubles you have went through and the problems that you have solved. She has chosen you specifically for your unique skills at getting things done. Mm-hmm. She has agreed to pay each of you 60 gold crowns. Each? Yeah. Well. To help you understand the importance of this mission. She's ensured that you are amply compensated for whatever dangers may come about. I'm sure you can understand the sensitivity of this mission. Next next question. How many people is coming with us? Are six and uh, one other person, or is there going to be a retinue of people to be looking after? Oh, good question. Well, to go into the details, you'll be provided with transport to Kael Tyrion. You should find Captain Wolfgang near Westgate. In the same time, a military unit led by a brigandine commander named Captain Tannefeld will leave Durindal simultaneously. The Baroness's spies are spreading word that this is the real escort. Mm-hmm. So we are, we're going a, a different way. Yeah. Right. Now you understand the importance of this mission. I do. And uh, <laughs> the route we are taking is it just one other person and six of us, so seven total, 
or the, is there anyone else coming? Captain Wolfgang will be accompanied by two people. So ten altogether. Sammy Newhouse, a tinker of sort, mm-hmm. an ogre of a woman named Hrung Bigley. So three mm. people and six. What yeah. Pur- what purpose do so tinker and a large woman serve? <laughs> Captain Wolfgang can speak more about that with you. Yeah. I'm just needing to know number of people. That's all. So. You will be bearing not only the barrister to the west into Kael Tyrion for her business there, but a gift is to be delivered as well. How far are we to, How far is this? How many days' journey? Kael Tyrion is a week. Yeah. By horse. Yeah. Not on foot. Yeah. And, uh, the, the route will be certainly chartered by the captain. I know he will have more details on that. This payment, is it up front? Is it after? Is some of it up front, some of it after? Oh, good question. So, 10 crowns could be issued now, 20 upon reaching Kael Tyrion, and the remaining 30 upon the barrister Mansfield's return, safe to return to the Rindle. And all the particulars of horses and such that coming out of our end or hers should you require additional help it is your job to pay for it to make sure all your hirelings are trustworthy your food stores are taken care of it is on you to take to withdraw from your tin gold crown advance i see well Tara, not be too, trying to be too forward but i used to do this for a living i mean i can i can see to it i think it's good hmm well, let's get that 60 now. <laughs> 10 crowns now. 20 once you read. No, 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 no. There's you six meant of us. the 60 six for the us. six of us. Hmm. No, no, no. I, I understood you the first time. So a contract must be drafted. Perhaps we will speak tonight. We should speak tonight to the dire straits. Yeah. When are we leaving? I should suspect as soon as a few days. A few days? All right. I know that the weather is about to turn for the winter, he says as he looks toward the sky. It will not be long now till the first snows come. How long do you anticipate this business to take? The details of the barrister Mansfield's visit to Kale Tyrion is hers and hers alone. I am certain that she will have more to share with you ostensibly she shall she shall be well she shall she shall instruct you with what is further required of you once you're on Calterian she'll be the one to issue you the 20 crowns as well and she is our main concern then the, the three others they are not Captain Wolfgang Sammy Newhouse and Hrung Bigley are competent. They have agreed to this mission as they are loyal servants to the court of the Baroness. They are not mercenaries. They are not sellswords. So they are also <clears throat> expected to be protected, is I, I suppose the way I am. No, no, no. The certificates are given. We don't need to worry. Only the Baroness. The best is the most important. She is a, a VIP. Well, she must be kept I, safe. I think her question is, and I'm reinforcing that. Should danger befall? And those others, certificate is given, we still get paid. Yeah. Okay, good. We've got a cannon fodder. <clears throat> don't know that I would well, put it that way. Don't need to be so macabre about it. But, uh, Why wouldn't I be? Well... You're, you're Not in front of him is what I'm saying. <laughs> He's already asked us to help him foment rebellion, and now we're being forced into it because dipshit over here took a knee and decided we were going to do it before we even spoke to our leadership in our own organization. I do believe he has what they like to call in politics hamstrung us. I don't want hamstrung you at all. You wish to earn the Baroness's grace? You will earn it this way. Yeah, 
I do not. You have an unending. You have an unending love. And I just want to make sure an unending love comes only with the barrister being safe. Because I, we're not yeah. signing up for these other three. Yeah. Fine. Sixty crowns is sixty crowns, but having having the baroness owe you one, I think, is a something far more important than coin. Oh, she. Consider not your own selfish needs, but consider the greater grace of the Dufresne. Your house is on the edge of ruin. It is a plain fact. You are far away from the capital of the, of the known world. The Dufresne Agency has withered. Along with it, as the war has died down, there is aught else to be found here in the Rovain Girdle. With the ascendance of the Baroness, and the turn of the city-state to be seceded from the Girdle, there will be title, compensation, and much, much more to be given out to those who have proven they are loyal to her needs. A fine gamble, isn't it? I, I, a country of flame. Uh, hold, That's what I'm saying. Hold a moment. Uh, at least a moment, if you would, <laughs> before we continue to talk these negativity into being. Uh, Hexenstein here has been our friend. We are charged with helping the Baroness. It's not negatives, it's reality. Well then, for a moment, let me speak the reality. He speaks truth here. To a certain extent, at least. And we have been sent to assist the Baroness. I am not saying, necessarily, that I like the way that that was handled. For us to be speaking with her, and for us to possibly be working with her. However... This is where we stand, and this is what we need to discuss as us. There's no offense to you, my friend. You understand. Of course, of course. Please, I understand. I should hope that when I bring the contracts this evening, you shall sign your names or your mark, as he, as eyes pass to Alistair. <coughs> or sorry, not to Alistair, to Warren. Uh, I can make my mark it, or my sign. That you, will, that, you will, that you will do this thing that is good for everyone. And not just yourselves, but for the good of all of Drindle. We shall meet when the sun sets at Diastrange, yeah? Yes. Um, please, uh, let us draw the contract. Of course, I will read, but uh, yes. I shall draw them henceforth. I shall see you by sundown. Thank you. Thank you. I will send the page to return you back to your estate. Some time will pass and you will get back to, you'll essentially get back to where you started. Back about midday. We need to go to our antechamber and talk. Indeed. Yeah. Oh, I would ask, I'm concerned if I could keep the cloak. Oh yes, absolutely. Thank, Thank you. The cloaks. Sweet. I mean, if we're doing a secret mission, we might not want to wear it while we're riding uh, around, but... I think that's the worst thing we could possibly yeah. do. Flip it inside out. Thank you. It is, a, it is a, literally a fancy cape. Not a cloak, <laughs> fancy a cape. cape. Oh, it doesn't have a hood. It's a fancy cape of Dupre. D-U-P-R-E. Fancy Dupre cape. Oh. I will treasure it as a family heirloom. <laughs> As I was wearing it when she looked at me. <laughs> I'll never wash it. Exactly. I'll never wash it. I'll, I'll never wash it. Sign my boobs, Harper says. I'll never wash my eyes again. Right. right. You return back to dire straits, and by the time you get back, it's raining. Not surprising. A cold, chilly rain, and you close the window panes with the the rain kind of pitter patters against the glass, and you draw the shades closed, and you throw fire on the hearth as your small room begins to kindle with warmth. You hang your wet your wet cloaks outside the door, your boots as well, and you pull your socks off and hang them by the fire. You all are sitting in this private room that you have been assigned here at the Dire Straits. But before you adjourn yourselves and speak in private, let's talk this over. We are going into literally the heart of the lion. Cassandra Malice to the king is not just called a unifier. He has a lot of other names. He didn't unify this country, countries, with being even-handed. 
And no. this woman is going to rebel against this man. And we are going to lead this barrister to do this rebellion. Do you not understand what we're doing? What she is wheeling us into? I know you understand. I don't know what happened to you. You pretend like we didn't have days or, I don't even know, a week of heads up. Heck, Stern told us how long ago what the Baroness's plans were. Who you have not settled in yourself. Who cares what she was Whether you would decided planning? whether you would be on that side or not. I, oh, definitely not. You, you just spent all that time bed. drinking? Gentlemen. I, was, I gentlemen, drank one time. And, and, please. And, and let's not go so you there. spent more time drinking please, than thinking. Please, gentlemen. We've had enough of that. Now, as, as I said, I, rebellion. I, I appreciate you spelling it out for everyone so that we do know what we're getting in, ourselves into. You don't. You're not and from the West. You have no clue. You act like my uncle uh, didn't have any part to do in that war with the Unifier. Check your pride at the door. There's enough of that. So, uh, excuse me, I am... I'm Ravanian. I may not know. I do not know because I'm, I'm not from the West. But... I do know what it's like to be in service to Cassandra and Malister. And he is a very brutal man. Family's been serving him for three generations now. And so is the Dufresne. It is not something to take lightly. So, here's one thing I'd like to say on that. Do you think that the master of spies and the master of the occult, because even though we report to Alexei Casimir, Liam, De, Liam Dufresne did also send us here to help the Baroness. Do you think the master of spies would not know her intentions? Maybe also her father? That writ you carry so pridefully. Mm -hmm. Who signed the bottom of that writ? Santa Master. That's uh, that's who your father, you, your father reports to. I'm aware. But oh. to pretend that I'm my father is something completely different. Hopefully, I've at least proved somewhat. Sometimes I think a little bit more than him. Uh, where? A little. Where is the headquarters of the Dufresne Agency? It is at Steve's Hill, just outside of Durandal. It's here, yeah. It's here. It's in Durandal. Mm -hmm. And if by outside, is it to the east, west, north, or south? To the south. Yes, to the south. It's between here and Hastings. The question is, we have the time. Do we want to report this to our superiors? There's one thing to bring up. As being one who does this reporting quite a bit, um, if we were simply to find a messenger and send a message from here to the agency with them having any knowing of it happening, it could look bad considering the information we have. If we send a messenger and it's secret and they catch it, it looks obviously ten times worse. My question is, do we risk? We weren't told that we were. Warren. Warren's already told half the damn city. Everyone knows it. Everyone knows it now, sir. As, in, As been, they should. I've been, going, I've been going on and on about raising funds so we can perform our operations. It may not be that bad if I was looking to go to Steed's Hill in order to, to see about getting some some help to uh, help the financial nature so that we could perform our mission. You could go with me. We could. I don't think all of us should go. No. That would look bad. 
but we could, or possibly half of us could. You suspect that if you were to ride to Steed's Hill, even on a good day with a sturdy horse, it'd take you half a day to get there and half a day to get back. Well, we don't have an exact time. So... So a few days. <laughs> what do we think of that? Bought it yourself some, uh, some drink, some <laughs> coin. Well... Yeah, I mean, that's why that's why we're going. Yeah, but... Oh. My loyalty is to the frame. Not to this sun, moon, and stars who wants to break away from the rightful king. So, with that in mind... My vote is yes. You go. I think well, you're gonna find out that they already know. I think so, too. I think they already know. So what that means is, <clears throat> if 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 they want us to actually do it or, or not, or if they want us to have a second second hidden agenda. So, well, no thoughts. Moving on. Your thoughts? Do we go? Do we not? I mean, you you can do what you want. I mean, here I'm going to give you these ten cow coins, so that way. Uh, you talk about getting yourself some armor. I don't need it. The coins are marked with the Baroness's face on them. On the other side, the symbol of the war. Freshly minted. Thank you. All right. So I intermingle, with the, coin, they intermingle with the coins of the west and the north. She's making her own coinage. Right. Well, um. That does not distribute quickly, so this is obviously pen. Again. So then, is the vote that we go and we speak to the... Yeah, that's superiors. what we're talking about right now. That's the only thing we're talking about right now. I, I understand, yeah. and that's so, what I'm asking. What do people so, think? Obviously, yes. You're mm-hmm. ambivalent. I say we go. I'm going to prepare. If you want to go and talk to Steve yeah. Hill, go for it. Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait your turn. So you're ambivalent, or you, you're saying yes. Yes, you can go to okay. Steve's Hill with my blessing. That's what you need. I know it's a bit odd. Well, apparently you speak for us, so. Hey, hey, let's. We we we, all... we set our piece about I'm, it. I'm just jesting. You shouldn't do it. You you thinking we should go? Oh yeah. Okay. You. Like I said, so long as the whole of us don't go. Right. All six of us are seen riding out of town. That's sure. Pad. Sure. Alistair? Are we referring to going to Kaeltiri, and are we referring to asking the boss man? Going to, and, and checking in with the boss man. Yeah. Seems about right. I mean, here's the deal. If we find out something smells fishy... We can call another play later on the road. Mm-hmm. Well, so, so you're saying we should go? Yeah. Okay. Here's the thing. Here's, here's my take on it. I don't think we need to go. I think they already know. But I'm willing to go. Because if all of us are this passionate about it, and with the danger that there is. You sign that document. That's it. You are a rebel. Huh, never thought of it that way. But you're right. You are against the king. So, Exenstern is going to be coming up, coming by tonight. And he's going to have a contract. And I stated that we needed to read it through. Are you going to be able to come up with a reason for us to need to sign it tomorrow? Or the day after? I suppose I'll have to, hey? Uh Uh-huh. Well, some of us supposedly can't read, so you'd have to read it out loud, wouldn't you? (laughs) I'm relying on you. I know that. To buy us time to go to Steve's Hill. I know that. I can try. 
the best I can do. To be honest, at this point, we're between a rock and another fucking rock. <laughs> I, I, there's not much. Because if we now, even I understand, you, you speak of this treason or whatever, and if we were to now just say, oh, no, we don't want to do it, especially after having, even if he hadn't agreed, you think that we hadn't been strong-armed into this place in the first place? You, you are incorrect. I don't speak of treason. It is treason. I, I understand, but you also understand that I don't know that there was much other direction no, to go. No. I do not pretend that you thought through the words that you spoke. Just because I don't speak a lot doesn't mean I don't think before I speak. We well, all knew what we were getting into. We all uh, knew we were going in there to agree. It want me. Your I words didn't, came didn't from it. your ass, sir. I didn't know it. Also, I'm not from these parts, and I don't have a head for statecraft. You know, I was born under the service of a different. Apparently, you got cobwebs in them ears. Already once, it's not nearly as big a deal as you're making it out to be. Shit happens. He shrugs and kind of goes back to what he was doing. Well, at least we know where you stand. But There's, all the same, there is a. Oh, wow, I'm I'm losing my train of thought. <laughs> There's a certain amount of practices, principles that we have as a chain of command. Now, even though I don't like to enact that chain of command very often, <sighs> I feel like I'm the only one that can be making decisions for others. I don't take it lightly, but I make decisions for you. That's why I try and get you input. But even then. Even if I ask for your opinion, and I truly and honestly believe that we should do something else, we're going to do that something else. But I believe, Eileen, you need to be able to trust who's above you. Now, that is why there's such a problem with you speaking for other people. And that's why we can't have that again. Well, then maybe next time you speak up. You spoke before I even had a chance to speak. She spoke, she looked at all of us, and then her eyes rested on me, and I gave the answer that I knew we all were going to give. Did you want to debate there in her presence? No. Did you want to take everyone's opinion while we stood in her presence? No. No. You bent the knee because you knew, in your heart, that's what we were going to do the whole damn time. It's what I knew in my heart. I'm curious what head you were thinking with. <laughs> like I said, I've been thinking about this long and hard. Hard. It's the one. Right. Oh, enough of that. Yeah. Listen. Maybe if you had one, you'd know it's not that fun. It's not that important. You could speak for yourself. You don't got. Have you signed anything yet? There's a contract involved, right? If you all want to pussy out of this or finagle your way out of this or run back to Steed's Hill, you can good well do so. I'm sensing an awful amount, a lot of defensiveness there. Well. I'm just trying to set something straight. Alright. You're not getting, you're not in trouble, you're not getting reprimanded. It's sure just, as hell seems like it. It's because you're making it out to be that way. If you're right. Wrong. All the jabs from everyone else besides you who's talking sense. Yeah. I'm not being attacked. I can just gather my things and find my else. Well, and I'll be here tonight and sign my name and we'll go on our own ways. Do we have an understanding? Sure. You okay. speak next time. And I won't have to. We don't, then we don't have an understanding. All I'm trying to say is you don't speak for others. You speak for yourself. That's it. That's all I'm trying to say. Nothing else. There's all this that you all are trying to say. That's it. That's all I care about. Well, this ain't exactly a democracy here. I don't even know what that word means, technically. But it ain't. <laughs> yeah, it this does. Is a, Sam. <laughs> this is supposed to be a unit of any sort, and you're the leader, then lead. 
Well, the truth be told, if I had intended to do something else anyway, I would have just lied in that situation. There isn't a single one of us who would have told the truth, so... The man's right. That's not the situation in which this occurs. We have those discussions later. By the way, I'm not saying I'm not going to do it. I'm saying it's not that big of a deal. Fair enough. Then we can move on. I really could use to get my hands on that coin, though. If we're going to go around, I'm going to... I'm going to prepare myself a little better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That Gambison's looking a little warm. I've taken, uh... taken a few more, uh... a few closer shots to, uh... eternity than I would care to. All right, so are we willing to drop this from now on? Sure thing. Oh, I ain't never picked it up. So you know that no less, than, no more than five hours from now that Master Hexenstern yeah. will be here with the contracts. So the question is, now you all have discussed it, is anyone going to go to Steed's Hill tonight? I think we should. Who are we sending? That's the question. The two of you guys? Who's, uh, I mean... Well, we can't, there, we can't, uh, send, her, we can't send her tonight because she's got to be around to read the contracts and stuff. Technically, yeah. And it would be a better idea to go to <laughs> I mean, it's a half day, though. So, do you really want to travel at night, or would you rather go in the morning? We're speaking of a board here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yes. we, could, we could travel there, rest the night, and travel back in the morning. You could, but wouldn't it be just as easy to travel tomorrow? Just require it. We have to check. We, we need have to, to check in. We need, we need a day. Yeah, well, I don't prepare. understand why we have to... Why we have to... We need a, we need a day and a half to prepare. At least I could leave a letter for Hexenstern. Just, no, no, just, no, I mean, just seriously. He I tell him. brings the contracts, you tell him we need a day and a half to prepare for this. Because but he's going to bring the contracts in the evening. I don't know. Tonight. Tonight. Right. We have to sign them in front of him. Leave. I'm, but you could leave tomorrow in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, we could probably Ask leave in the morning and just say, hey, we need, we need three days. So the decision is to leave tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So the night will come. And Hexenstern will arrive uh, here at, uh, at, uh... Did you want to have that conversation before you came? Between the two of us. She probably would. Okay. Uh, you both will gain three corruption. That's fine. The others are kind of ushered out of the room and feel incredibly uncomfortable as the two of you speak one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> there is a discord That's among it, the group. Man. Listen in. I guess our betters are uh, going to make more adjustment calls for us. Internal yeah. Affairs is whipping up our asses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, before, so this will be happening before, um, before Hexenstern arrives. I want to make something absolutely clear. Mm -hmm. I don't like talking like this in secret. I think that we should be able to trust each other enough. I'll say that now, and I'll, and I'll end it there. When I give you this information, maybe you'll understand why I don't necessarily want to say it to a man who says there's other voices in his head, another man who says there's other voices in his head, and a man who usually uses his dick to figure out if he's going to make promises for us. There's only one other person in that group that I would possibly trust, and even he has self-serving purposes. And I'm not saying that necessarily the group is bad. At the same time, I want you to have this information before we pass it out generally. Fair enough. So, that being stated, you asked me when I first showed exactly why I came here and assumed that it was something having to do with looking into the group or making sure that they were doing things right or correct or whatever. And that was not it. Huh. Which I stated to you in the first place. However, New information coming to light, it seems like it is time for me to tell you what the actual purpose of me being here is. And that would be that we do know. We have known for quite a while what the Baroness was planning on this. Hexenstern was obviously just a pawn brought in on our side to be able to get close to the Baroness and learn more about this particular plot that she had been plotting. Mm -hmm. And you know as Dufresne that we don't really get into the political, or at least we try to stay out of it. Right. 
but Alexei sent me here to f become trusted with the Baroness and find out this information. Now, I would assume that considering they know this information and considering they wanted to know these things for sure from one of their agents, there must be someone in her core that also knows that we needed this information and need to get it back to the Dufresne. Mm -hmm. Hence the reason I question if it's a good idea for us to leave. That being stated, though, this is treason against the king. And we as Dufresne do serve him. find ourselves in quite the difficult place. So what you're suggesting is that there are other spies among the Baroness's court who are watching you. You think that you can make it out of this city tomorrow without no one noticing? You think you can make the journey yourself? Because I ain't going anywhere without people noticing. The truth comes that I've been the one that's been unnoticed before. I'm not saying necessarily that it's a good idea for us to be quiet about it. But it might be best if we were. Once again, they know that we know. And if we were to pass on more information, it's very possible that your entire group is going to be put to the sword immediately, no matter what Harper's promised of us. So once again, I brought this to you, not them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you're saying that we shouldn't go and tell the Dufresne? I don't know. You don't I'm know. stuck in so many political machinations at this right. point that I'm not sure where we should go. So, here's the thing. We we would be in danger if anybody knew we went back to Steve Till, right? Correct. That's why I'm asking if you think you can do this without anyone knowing. Because if you take me, someone's going to know. And I don't know. However, if we need to get this information back, which we do... This is exactly what Alexa needed the information of. Mm -hmm. Then it needs to be quiet. And if I'm found, if I am the one to go, then you need to tell them that you didn't know. Oh, fuck. Right. Do you understand? Yeah. So, maybe you stay. Maybe I suspiciously get sick for the next three days. I don't know. It needs to be something that you can keep them off my trail. But it doesn't make sense that both of us go. And if we both go, once again, they will know. They. It's not. It's not our group. It's the people outside our group, right? Yes. Unfortunately, our group has not necessarily had the best history of keeping secrets. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> no, I see. A bit obtuse. I see why you <laughs> say this now. I had to wait. I had to wait to see if this group could be trusted, and no offense, but the man screaming about dead bodies chasing him through the streets is not exactly someone I want to give the information to. Or someone that tells an entire group that treason is happening. Or the man that promises my life in front of a girl because she's got nice tits. It's not exactly. Does she? Huge tracks of them. I wasn't really... I was... Sorry, the mirrors apparently make him look bigger. Mm. It'll state. However, those are not necessarily the people that I can find myself trusting with this information. Right. Oh. Uh. Tell you what, Lieutenant. You told me. Do you want me to go? Or do you want me to stay? No, I want you to go. Fine. No home this choice, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there it is. Thank you, Sirens <laughs> Game. <laughs> <laughs> then I go, and they don't know either. Do you 
understand that, right? Everyone. I can't tell them you went. <laughs> Once again. Alright. <laughs> They're your men. You tell me if you trust them. After that display in the courtroom. After that display that we've had since we went into that damn sister. You tell me. Not saying they're bad men, but I'm not saying that I want my life necessarily in their hands. On this particular mission. Yeah, I think if anyone asks, I'm just saying. go shopping tomorrow or something. As we're getting prepared, you know, getting food and who knows what, what else. So is the intention for you to slip away tomorrow or tonight? Above board. Keep going tonight. After exit start. Probably not. Okay. Want a red eye. So Hexenstern will arrive this the evening. The best way to be this end to this year. Right. Hexenstern will arrive this evening to uh, to the bustling tavern of Dia Streets. Once the music dies. <laughs> Creative music. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty busy in here. Quite a few people. A few dogs wandering on the floor. A musician <clears throat> tuning his lute, playing some strange foreign instrument that sounds like they're pulling at your ears every time. The sound is horrendous and seems to have any rhythm. Hexenstern will arrive. No Good problem. evening, he says. And he is accompanied by the page. The same page who comes to fetch you. The Baroness's page. I trust that I find you in good spirits," he says. He puts his books down in a collection of papers, and in a, in a and the page ha- appears to have like a, a a writing kit with him as the page puts it down. Yeah, it's been a while since I took a trip <laughs> on holiday. Get away for a bit. You could say my spirits are in balance. Yeah, I must admit. I was surprised that the Baroness had moved so quickly on this. She has become more distant over these past few months. So, her behavior was not standard of what before. Well, she has been drawing her closest attendants even closer, particularly <coughs> The Veris or Rosalia Mansfield. They have a close relationship, one which women would share. A kinship that, uh, as a man, one cannot have with her. I trust I am her confidant, of course, but... In these matters, political. <laughs> as I said, my my concerns are more celestial, and uh, the Veris or Rosalia is a more ter- celestial of this world. Mm. Political. <laughs> What's the boy here for? I'm attending to uh, the contracts, sir. And I'm not a boy. She says. You told me to call you boy. <laughs> Have you met before? <laughs> All the pages seem to look the same though we're in the court. The same bob, short bobbed hair. Whatever. Apologies, girl. You resemble someone from before. Well, I, I have one question. Yeah. He kind of leans on the table and he kind of perches over and listens closely. Uh, can you excuse them? 
Girl, please, if you would, uh, see to uh, my room for the evening here. Yeah? Yes, sir. He places a shilling or two in her hand, and she will scurry away. I have heard something. And uh, something to drink and eat for present company. He leans in. Yeah, yes. I'll lean in as far as I can. What is the look? He, <laughs> he kind of pulls back for a moment and smiles. And what happened? The Baroness, uh, he looks around and kind of comes a little closer. We have a, uh, we have a room. Sus- no. We have been working to... The Baroness certain predilections. And these predilections have been caricatured well, characterized in broadsheets and other forms of lyric pornography. The Baroness's court has been trying to strike down these images images throughout the city. The Baroness has certain tastes. No, not first. But she has... He kind of looks over his shoulder to make sure the page is nowhere nearby. The barrister and I have an inside joke. I've known her for several months, and this is not the first time she has given someone what we kind of call the look, uh, which usually means, uh, unless I'm certain, I'm sure you can assert, and the baroness that takes a fancy to some people. You uh, <laughs> apparently are one of those people, Mr. Clavager. Straighten up my shirt and puff out my chest a little bit. Like, oh, yeah. I wish she hadn't said that. Oh. Well, the Baroness's love is, uh, unfortunately fleeting. She can never really love one person. She is, uh, well, she is the sun, moon, stars to all the people. Here. Yeah, yeah, she is a good person, no doubt. She is conflicted uh, between her mind and her heart, as many men and women are, drawn between that which we think for our emotion, that which we think for our logic box. Duty and lust, we'll just speak to that. Not lust, but <laughs> we all have our weaknesses, uh, mas- master steeples. Oh, uh, you call it whatever you want. Come on. <laughs> She is an amorous and loving woman. Her friendships sometimes tarry. <clears throat> As I was saying, the page approaches once again. I have drawn the contracts for you. Uh, you will see they are written in plain speak, knowing uh, what we have discussed. This simply states that uh, you will do the same thing we spoke about before, that you will be paid 60 gold crowns each, 10 now, 20 upon reaching Kale Tyrion. And 30 upon ba- Mansfield's return, safe return to Durendal, uh, you'll be provided transportation. Uh, you will meet Captain Wolfgang near the gate uh, to provide... No, I already spoke about that. Uh, if you need to hire additional help, uh, it is your job to pay for it and make sure all hirelings are trustworthy. A simple three bullet point list. You need only assign your name to the bottom of the paper and uh, I shall be able to issue you the first of ten crowns. That was my mistake right otherwise. She didn't give, he didn't give any coin at that point. Okay, but that's fine. I'll give it to you that. The, at this point, the page kind of produces a heavy box and sits it on the ground and opens it, and you can see, really kind of like in Quentin Tarantino movies, like you can see the reflection. As, he, as, as she opens the, the one side, you can see kind of the, the reflection of gold upon her pale face. Elisa begins looking through the contract. They're written clearly as I just stated. There's literally three bullet points, and then it says... I lawfully ascribe to attend to these duties at the will of the Baroness, and that's it. You make your mark. Is there anything that states something about basically an NDA, if you will? No. Medieval NDA? L- li- no. Literally, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's as simple as that. It simply says, you will be paid 60 gold crowns, da 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 uh, You'll provide a transport, you'll need Captain Wolking near Westgate. If you want to hire additional help, it's your responsibility. I ascertain this, by the name of the Baroness... 
Madeline Dupre, Sun and Moon and the Stars of Durindal, and then Signature. There's no, literally written in plain speak. These were drafted very hastily, and I apologize if they are a bit unprofessional, but I felt, knowing the timeliness that the Baroness wishes to depart tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning? We don't have time to even fix flights. I, I apologize, but we have to have time to get our things. And we were told a few days, a couple of days. The Baroness moves very quickly. There is a fire in her stomach that has clearly been lit, and that fire is virtually your blades. I'm sure you saw it earlier. They are already taking her image for uh, legal purposes. Oh. Nonetheless, the Baroness has, uh, has wishes to move very quickly and has asked that you gather yourselves at Southgate by midday. I apologize, friend, but... There are things that we need to take care of before we leave. There's there's quite a bit of logistics, you know, mm -hmm. making making a journey of this of this nature, this many oh. people and everything. You wouldn't understand. I do, I've done this for a living. Oh goodness, I certainly I would invite you to meet in the morning before you were to depart with Captain Wolfgang to make any preparations. He will have details about the road which you will travel, how many days it will be there, the path through the Black Fire Pass. Uh, he will also speak to you about the accompanying uh, mission with Captain with Commander Tannenfeld, the the other escort that is going to depart before you. He will help you fill out any logistics you need, and then you can take your coin and make your purchases at the gates at the at the, at the at south gate of the markets. Did you say Black Fire Pass? Yeah, to the west. Is there an armor smith and a weapon? Oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. That is. Um, it, is, it is land that's not cultured. The folk, indeed, uh, dwell amid the past, but they are... Uh, Lord Randall the Long is friendly with the Baroness. As you say. <clears throat> she has taken an extensive amount of time to build proper relationships before... Pursuing this divorce, if you will. Understandably, but though I know that there might be a chance to procure some things that we need by tomorrow morning, armor can't be fitted in a four hour period. There's certain things that can't be done in a day. Well, unfortunately, we are all caught between a rock and a hard place. If it was my choice, it would not happen this quickly. As I said, it would be a few days to make proper preparations, as you have said. But it is clear, knowing that the timeliness of this mission is nigh, the Baroness has ordered that the mission must be carried out and that they both escorts must depart by midday tomorrow. Well, we'll just have to make some preparations through the night, and then some of us can sleep on the carriage while others of us stay watch. He smiles at the mention of carriage. You have horse. Yeah? All right, I have Matthew. I know a man who trades in horse flesh at the gates. I can see two horses if you need it as an extension uh, of forgiveness for such hastiness and your inability to plan around it. So, wait, there's no carriage. Uh, not precisely. There's a carriage, but we ain't not allowed on. I wouldn't call it a carriage. Is it something that you can sleep on? Yeah, I'll be right, I'm certain. What is it then? Captain Wolfgang will explain more. Nonetheless, I can see two uh, horses for you. I can put in a favor for this evening. I shall... I shall... Take on the cost for your rent of the horses as, as, as an apology for the hastiness of this plan. You all can ride, yeah? Well, I can. But well, yes. okay. I wouldn't want to speak for them. I've been on a horse once in my life at some point, I'm sure. I simply sit on the saddle and you hold the reins and you listen to Harper. He will tell you what to do. I wouldn't want to tell you to do. Enough. So, the contracts. 
he pulls out the he pulls out the papers. He pulls out the paper and turns it toward you, and he opens this box and produces an ink well and a thin ivory pen with a with a brass tip. With your signature, you are ascertaining your service to the Baroness, and he goes through some standard, you know, uh, it's the stuff you read in NDA right up front, uh, TNC right up front. It's very standard. And uh, by signing your name here, you are promising yourselves each to this mission. Ah, the drinks! He stands up and takes the pitcher and sits it down. Uh, if you would, go. Please see yourself to the back room. Uh, go do this and that, and he will t- turn to her and give her some coin and send her away as to not disturb your well, discussions. Uh, yeah. Um, Warren stands up and spills the pitcher all over the contracts. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that was good. Today. All right, <laughs> make a skull duggery test to hide this. Okay. Uh, um. This test is going to be easy. <laughs> okay. Exactly this is going to be a sixty-nine percent chance to succeed with the fail. Uh oh. <laughs> and I roll a fifty, which succeeds. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what I was going to do. <laughs> he said pitcher, and I was like... <laughs> There's the sound of a smashing nearby. I quickly stand up, so... Ah! Oh, the poor. contracts! Poor. Whoa. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> he pulls out a rag and starts oh. to dry it. So ink has been ruined. <laughs> My goodness, I am so sorry. I meant to put it so close to the oh. edge of the table. Right. He seems very. Oh, he seems yeah. very apologetic. Damn, my Warren. Clumsy, clumsy hands. <laughs> no. I I am so sorry. I suppose we'll have to redraft these in the morning. Warren, should be more careful. The I know as it would, but I can redraft it and bring it to you in the morning. We can meet at the gates per se. Uh, sun up. I can drink to that. I am so sorry. I did not mean to put the. The picture near you, so are, are you? Are you? I am so like, sorry. He picks up a couple of rags, starts drying you off. Oh no! We, we shall do our best. We will meet with him in the morning, and if we can get all everything sussed out as far as logistics goes, we'll be ready to leave in the afternoon. But if we can't, there will be delays. Only if there's no other choice. I'm, I'm certain we can come to... He'll pick can, his things up, and he looks a bit yeah. a bit irritated. I'm certain we can come to it. You, you you said your man's a good man, and he can help figure things out. Yeah, but it is not only uh, your honor that is at stake here. Mm-hmm. I vouched for you, and I'm afraid if you are late, that will bode very poorly for all of us. Well, then you've got nothing to worry about. Okay. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, I will meet you at Westgate in the morning when the sun comes up. Uh, We'll meet in the market. You will know it. You've probably been to it before. Mm -hmm. I will find you in the market. We will meet towards... uh, Mm -hmm. Let's meet for the last... Let's meet at the last half, he says. Sounds good. we got some shit to do. All right. I will, uh, these contracts, I'm not sure that I'll be able to arrange for horses, unfortunately, if I have to draft these tonight, so I'm afraid you'll be on your own for finding steeds. Fair enough. How much does a horse cost? Way more than God ten. awful amount of money. Way more than ten. Actually, it's in your player handbook, or your little sheet here. I was just wondering. To rent or to buy? Yeah, it was just for. Is your horse to let? <laughs> a mule or donkey is 10 gold coins to buy. A dray horse is 21 gold crowns. And then from there it jumps to 90 for a palfrey. 100 because for a. Transportation is supposed to be provided. Corsair horse is 2. Yeah, horse is to the seven. Well, and a destrier, which is what I have, is 952. Yeah. That's tough. So tomorrow morning then, we will meet at the last half. Just a, just outside of Westgate. And we'll be able to equip ourselves or purchase uh, 
military military grade equipment? Well, once the contract is signed, of course, and I will arrange for horses then. I just will be able to do it tonight. Mm, I'll be there. You can count on it. Well then, I must be away. I'm going to go upstairs and work on these downable contracts. Uh, uh, please, eat, drink, on me, on, on the Baroness's coin, and uh, we shall speak uh, in the morning. Yeah? Mm. Alright. He will excuse himself, and the page will disappear with him, and you smile kind of slyly at Warren. And we will end the session I shake here. My head at <laughs> One hundred reward points. That was, smart. That was great. That was great. That was very clever. I liked, yep. it. I liked it very much. Corruption. Corruption. Mm-hmm. Only one Craftsman. fortune point to use tonight. Craftsman fingers and hope, hope, hope. That's all right. <laughs> like, wait a second. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> but you didn't do nothing wrong. No. I wasn't corrupt. Did I take any corruption? Mm-mm. I had six. I took one. Oh, I took one, too. So we Great. Then I we got wasted. gained a fate point. Oh, Yay! somebody converted! <laughs> I might, depending on Let's how damn. Oh my god, you're right. You're aren't you like on nine and nine? I'm at nine and seven. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so remember, if this roll is equal to, if your the number I roll is equal to or less than chaos, the roll tonight is seven. Huh, I got it. <laughs> nice. Did you get a fate point? I did. Yay! Oh, one of these. Oh my gosh, that's right. And you get another fortune point. Because remember, your fortune is equal to one. Plus your fate point. Uh, so I'm back up to two fate nice. points. So when you gain a new fate point, you erase all your yeah. ranks except for the permanent ones. If you have any permanent I don't ones. Have any permanent ones. Mm. says a permanent rank is. Is there a. You. Yeah. yeah. I mean, is there a way to get a permanent order? I've never yeah. seen that. Yeah, I got one. Really? Yeah. How? Yeah, yeah two movie. campaign two ago. Was that two ago? Or yeah. Wait, what did you care which that? character it was? I don't some remember. Sa- what I some did. sacrifice that he made. Yeah. Okay. So we will continue next week with episodes 33 and 34 of Queen of Embers. Cool. Thank you all so much for tuning in, watching, listening, awesome. patroning our Pitcher awesome team. Patreon, and helping serve <laughs> yeah. up uh, drinks and snacks. Yeah. <laughs> we look forward to bringing more awesome Thanks, stuff in the future. Yeah. Take yeah. care, yeah. and we'll see. So we'll see you all next time. Happy gaming.